Good day students and welcome to our second quarter of Arts 9. For this quarter, we are going to study about the Western and Classical Art Traditions. For this quarter, we are going to talk about the two periods, which are the Renaissance period and the Baroque period. For this lesson, our objectives are the following. First, identify distinct characteristics of arts during the Renaissance and Baroque periods. Second, recognize representative artists from Renaissance and Baroque periods. And third, explain the influence of iconic artists belonging to the Renaissance and the Baroque periods. Let's talk first about the Renaissance period. Renaissance comes from the word renate, which means rebirth. This period was the period of economic progress. They made few advances in science and art, and this is the transition from darkness to lightness. It was also an era of great artistic and intellectual achievement with the birth of secular art. When we say secular art, it can be defined as art that has no religious reference points and is, in fact, oblivious to organized religion. During this period, their focus as well was on realistic and humanistic art. Renaissance art was characterized by, first, accurate anatomy, second, scientific perspective, and third, deeper landscape. When we say anatomy, their focus was more on the structure of the human body, and when we say scientific perspective, the objects were drawn smaller as their distance from the observer increases. Scientific perspective is an approximate representation on a flat surface of an image as it perceived by the eye. The two most characteristic features of perspective are objects are drawn smaller as their distance from the observer increases. In their sculpture, it depicts natural portraits of human beings while their architecture is characterized by symmetry and balance. When we say symmetry, their architecture is made up of exactly similar parts while balance refers to how line, shape, color, value, space, form, and texture relate to each other. During this period, art is important to offer gratitude and share their ideas. St. Peter's Basilica in Rome is the greatest cathedral building during this period. Here are the different artists during the Renaissance period. We have Michelangelo di Lodovico Bonarotti Simoni, Leonardo di Sor Piero da Vinci, Raffaello Sanzio da Urbino, or also known as Raphael, and Donato di Niccolo di Beto Bardi, or also known as Donatello. Michelangelo di Lodovico Bonarotti Simoni was an Italian sculptor, painter, architect, and poet. He was considered the greatest living artist in his lifetime and was considered as one of the greatest artists of all time. Here are some of his famous sculptures. First is Pieta. This one is made out of Carrara marble and we could see Mary contemplating the dead body of her son which she holds on her lap. This represents pity or compassion. The second one is Bacchus. He was the Roman god of agriculture, wine, and fertility, equivalent to the Greek god Dionysus. A fawn or a half-human and a half-goat is sitting behind him eating a bunch of grapes. Third one is Moses. A sculpture of a prophet posed on a marble chair between two decorated marble columns with a long beard and horns on his head. Next is David. It is a marble statue of a standing male nude figure. Next is the dying slave. 
The Dying Slave is one of several unfinished sculptures of Michelangelo created for the tomb of Pope Julius II that did not make it into the final version of the tomb. It symbolizes the soul's struggle against the bonds of temptations and sins. Dusk and Dawn is a pair of sculptures on the tomb of Lorenzo de' Medici in the Medici Chapel in Florence. He also created the Last Judgment on the altar wall of the Sistine Chapel in Rome. This covers the altar wall in the said church. It depicts the second coming of Christ and the final and eternal judgment by God of all humanity. Next one is Leonardo di Sir Piero da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was a painter, architect, scientist, and mathematician. He was popularized in present times through the novel and movie, The Vinci Code. He is known as the Renaissance Man because of his intellect, interest, talent, and his expression of humanist and classical values. He was also considered to be one of the greatest painters of all time, and perhaps the most diversely talented person to have ever lived. The Last Supper and the Mona Lisa are his famous artworks. Last Supper depicts the dramatic scene described in several closely connected moments in the Gospels, in which Jesus declares that one of the apostles will betray him and later institutes the Eucharist. Mona Lisa was a real Florentine woman born and raised in Florence under the name of Lisa Gerardini. She was the member of the Gerardini family of Florence and Tuscany and the wife of wealthy Florentine silk merchant Francesco del Giocondo. The painting is thought to have been commissioned for their new home and to celebrate the birth of their second son, Andrea. His other works are The Vitruvian Man, wherein we can see the symmetry and balance of the sculpture. The Adoration of the Magi which represented the three magi as kings following a star and lay Jesus' gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and worship him. The next one is the Virgin of the Rocks, or also known as Madonna of the Rocks, which shows Madonna and the Christ child with the infant John the Baptist and an angel in a rocky settings, which gives the painting their usual name. Next artist during this period is Raffaello Sanzio da Urbino, or also known as Raphael. He was an Italian painter and architect of the High Renaissance period. His work was admired for its clarity of form and ease of composition and for its visual achievement of the interpreting the divine and incorporating Christian doctrines. He also formed the traditional trinity of great masters together with Michelangelo and Da Vinci. Some of his works are the School of Athens, which symbolizes the marriage of art, philosophy, and science, and was made to decorate the rooms now known as the Stanze di Raffaello in the Apostolic Palace in the Vatican. Next is the Transfiguration, which was his last painting on which he worked on up to his death. This is an event reported in the New Testament when Jesus is transfigured and becomes regent in glory upon a mountain. Jesus and three of his apostles, Peter, James, and John, go to a mountain into to pray. On the mountain, Jesus begins to shine with bright rays of light. Then Prophet Moses and Elijah appear next to him and he speaks with them. The Sistine Madonna, which depicts a vision appearing to saints in the clouds or in the middle, and Mary was standing towards the earthly realm, holding the Christ child in her arms. Next artist is Donato di Niccolo di Beto Bardi, or also known as Donatello. He was one of the Italian great artists of the period, and he was an early Renaissance Italian sculptor from Florence. He is known for his work in bas-relief. When we say a bas-relief, it is a sculpture technique in which figures or other design elements are just barely more prominent than the flat background. 
Some of these works are David. This represents a symbol of strength and hope for people and it tries to tell the society that men are stronger enough and have willpower. This statue is the same with Michelangelo's. The difference is that Donatello's David is much younger than Michelangelo with prominent muscles and a clear sense of masculinity. The statue of George was created for the group of Florentine armorers and sword makers. It was carved from marble. The equestrian monument of Gatamelata Donatello portrays Gatamelata as a composed, alert, and watchful leader that was why he created this sculpture. He was the one who fought for Venice and was the person depicted riding the horse. The last one is the face of Herod. It is Donatello's first bronze relief sculpture which depicts the life of St. John the Baptist. This scene depicts an executioner presenting the severe head and Herod reacting in shock. So let's now summarize the Renaissance period. During this period, Renaissance art is the art of calm and beauty. Its creations are perfect. They reveal nothing forced, uneasy, or agitated. Each form in this art has been born easily free and complete the next period is baroque period the baroque is a style of architecture music dance painting sculpture and other arts that flourish in europe from the early 17th century until the 1740s it comes from the portuguese word baroco which means irregularly pearl shape or stone baroque art wanted to reassert itself in the wake of the protestant reformation which is almost the same with catholic reformation art of the period baroque existed in varying degrees of intensity from a simple animated movement of lines and surfaces to a rich and dynamic wells just like what we have discussed in the previous lessons, Baroque is a style in exaggerated motion, drama, tension, and grandeur. The Roman Catholic Church highly encouraged this style to spread Christianity, while the aristocracy used this style for architecture to impress visitors, express triumph, power, and control. In Baroque period, Baroque painting illustrated the Catholic dogma, or a principle set by the authority of the church. Their gestures are also broader, and it is marked by similar sense of dynamic movement along with an active use of space. It is also designed to create spectacles and illusions. Here are the famous artists during this period. We have Michelangelo Merisi or Amerigi da Caravaggio, Gian Lorenzo Bernini, Peter Paul Rubens, Rembrandt Harman Zoon van Rijin, and Diego Velasquez. Let's talk about first Michelangelo Merisi. He was known as Caravaggio. He wanted to deviate from the classical masters of the Renaissance because of his own actions and the lack of modesty and reverence for religious subjects in his own paintings, he was an outcast in his society. His paintings were more of still life or a painting or drawing of an arrangement of objects, typically including fruit and flowers and objects. But for Caravaggio, he was more focused on fruits. His models during this period were either himself or young persons. One of his artwork is the Suffer at Emmaus. This depicts the moment when the resurrected but incognito Jesus reveals himself to two of his disciples, presumed to be Luke and Cleopas, in the town of Emmaus. Cleopas wears the scallop shell of a pilgrim. The other apostle wears torn clothes. Cleopas gesticulates in a prospectively challenging extension of arms 
in and out of the frame. It is unusual because of the life-size figures, dark and black background, and the table lays out of a steel life meal. Next artwork is the Entombment of Christ. This is consists of a tightly compact figurative group consisting of six people, including dead Christ. We could see that the upper body of Christ was supported by John the Evangelist or Joseph of Arimathea. The lower half is supported by Saint Nicodemus who removed the nails from Christ's feet on the cross. There were also three women, the Virgin Mary, Mary Magdalene, and Mary of Clopas, or the sister of Mary. The next one is the conversion of Saint Paul. The painting records the moment when Saul of Tarsus, on his way to Damascus to annihilate the Christian community. He was struck blind by a light from heaven. He claims to have seen Christ during his vision time. The next artist is Gian Lorenzo Bernini. Gian Lorenzo Bernini was an Italian artist and the first Baroque artist practiced architecture and sculpture, painting, stage design, and a playwright. He was the last in the list of dazzling universal geniuses and was the greatest Baroque sculptor and architect of Piazza San Pietro. He was an Italian artist and the first Baroque artist. His early works were the goat Amaltea with the infant Jupiter and a faun, damned soul, and the blessed soul. He was the greatest Baroque sculptor and architect, and it could be seen in his design of the Piazza San Pietro in front of the Basilica. The famous ecstasy of St. Teresa was his greatest achievement and the colonnade of the Piazza of St. Peter's Rome. Ecstasy of St. Teresa was made of white marble. The sculpture portrays the saint's overpowering sense of spiritual pleasure in serving Christ. She is a Spanish nun who chooses to enter the sisterhood instead of marrying a wealthy Hidalgo because of the belief that she would afford it more freedom. She felt suddenly consumed by the love of God, feel the bodily presence of Christ or angels. She was accused of communing with the devil. An angel was holding a golden spear with a fire in this sculpture. The next one is Peter Paul Rubens. He was a Flemish Baroque painter and he was well known for his paintings of mythical and figurative subjects, landscapes, portraits, and counter-reformation altarpieces. His works mostly were religious subjects, history paintings of magical creatures, and haunt scenes. Here are some of his works. We have the Samson and Delilah. Samson and Delilah are in a dark room, which is lit mostly by a candle held by an old woman to Delilah's left. Delilah is depicted with all of her clothes, but with her breasts exposed. Her left hand is on top of Samson's right shoulder, as his left arm is draped over her legs. Next one is the landscape with a tower. This view shows the medieval tower situated at the back of the house. Next one is the portrait of Helen Foreman. She was the second wife of Baroque painter Peter Paul Rubens. She was the subject of a few portraits of Rubens and also modeled for other religious and mythological paintings. The next artist during this Baroque period is Rembrandt Harmenzoon van Rijn. He was a brilliant Dutch realist, painter, and etcher. He often chooses religious subjects. Similar with Rubens, his subjects were more on personal, such as his home and his family. No other artist has often painted himself other than Rembrandt. This is an example of his painting. The self-portrait in old age was his well-known artwork. The next artist during this period is Diego Velázquez. 
He was one of the finest masters of composition and one of the most important painters of the Spanish Golden Age. He painted still life frequently and his famous artworks were The Surrender of Breda. This The Surrender of Breda depicts a military victory. Next is Las Meninas. Las Meninas simply means Maids of Honor. It is a work which truly marks the upper class. Infanta Margarita could be seen at the center and it shows her servants around her along with a couple of dwarves, two adult figures, and at the forefront of the picture, and a dog lying down. To sum it up, Baroque required broad, heavy, massive forms. Many European cathedrals have Baroque features, high altars, facades, and chapels. And we are done with the Renaissance period and Baroque period for this second quarter. Thank you for listening.